Thank you for the choral anthem by the Borough Choir. 자, 오늘은요, Today we are going to study the chronology of Samuel. The chronology of Samuel. 자, 우리가 성경에 보면은 사무엘이라는 그 인물을 우리가 찾아볼 수가 있죠. We see a person named Samuel throughout the Bible. 언약궤를 아벡 전투에서 빼앗겼는데 At the battle of Ath, God's ark of covenant was taken by the Philistines. And in order to understand the the migration route of the Ark of the Covenant after it was taken by the Philistines. We have to understand the years of Prophet Samuel. How long did Samuel live? <laughs> Samuel lived up to 117 years. So Reverend Evan Park categorize the life of Samuel by years. And this is the world's very first presentation of Samuel's life in such a meticulous chronology. So today we're going to study um, the chronology of Prophet Samuel. Samuel was a judge, but at the same time he was a prophet and the priest. He was a person of transition between the judges period and the period of monarchy. He bridged these two periods between the judges period and the monarchy period. The name Samuel is written in Hebrew this way, Shemuel. 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 This means God hears or heard by God. It means heard by God. His mother Hannah was barren, so she fervently prayed to God. And as answer to the prayer, God gave Samuel to Hannah. So the name Samuel means heard by God. Through this, whenever we pray to God, God certainly hears all of our prayers. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says, Seek, then you will receive, find, and you will, you will see, you will find, and knock, and you will, it will be open to you. So we must have prayer that seeks, and knocks, and that finds. So I pray, no matter what kind of wish you may have in 2017, may you all receive the answers from our God. And I pray this blessing upon you in the name of the Lord. Let's first take a look at the birth of Samuel. The birth of Samuel. He was born in 1302 BC. 1302 BC. 1302년이 아니라 1132년이에요. I'm sorry, it's 1132 BC. 1132 BC. 주전 1132년에 출생했다. He was born in 1132 BC. 이 사무엘의 아버지는 누구냐? 아버지는 엘가나죠. His father is Elkana. Elkana. Samuel상 This is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 1. He says that Elkanah was an Ephraimite. He was an Ephraimite. Yeah, he belongs to the tribe of Ephraim. However, Elkanah was not Ephraimite. Samuel and his father Elkanah actually belonged to the tribe of Levi. They were Levites. How can we know this? According to 1 Chronicles chapter 6, we see genealogy. 1 Chronicles chapter 6 verse 34, up to verse 38, we can see the genealogy of Samuel, and Samuel is the son of Elkanah, and this genealogy is in ascending order, and it goes all the way up to Kohath and the Levi. So Samuel is the son of Elkanah, and changes all the way up to being the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. So we can see Elkanah's 
에브라임에 속한 엘가나다 이렇게 성경은 말씀하고 있냐? 레이지파는 son is Samuel. So why is it all the their Levites are called as Ephraimite? Because Levites they do not receive any allotments of the land in Canaan. Levites were made to live scattered all around the region. So because these Levites and Elkana lived in the region of the Ephraimite land. They were also called the Ephraimite. Let me read First Samuel chapter one verse one. First Samuel chapter one verse one. Now there was a certain man from Remethaim Zephim, from the hill country of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Joram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tehu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. But in fact, he is not an Ephraimite, but he is a Levite. And this we can see from First Chronicles chapter six, verse thirty-four to thirty-eight genealogy. When we trace up the Samuel, we find Elkanah. When we trace up further, it can reach all the way up to Levi. So we can see both Samuel and Father Elkanah. Are they Ephraimites or are they Levites? We are. We now know that they are. Levites, but where they lived was in the region of the Ephraimites. That's why they are also introduced as an Ephraimite because they lived in the land of Ephraim. Now the mother is Hannah. Samuel's mother was Hannah. Even when we know it, if we ask the question ourselves, we forget the answer. Elkanah also had another wife, Peninnah. Peninnah was she had babies very well, but Hannah was barren. So in First Samuel chapter one verse ten, Hannah was so greatly distressed and she prayed to God and wept bitterly. So in First Samuel chapter one verse nineteen through twenty, it says God. It says God remembered Hannah and gave the son named Samuel. 이렇게 비록 태가 다쳤다 할지라도요. Although the womb was closed, when God remembered her, it was opened. 창세기 30장 22절에 보면은요. Genesis chapter 30 verse 22. Genesis chapter 30 verse 22. Rachel also was barren. But when God remembered Rachel and opened her womb, she could conceive a son named Joseph. A while ago, we have a young couple at our church, and they came to me, and they've been married for many, many years, but they were childless. So I said, "Let us pray." So we laid hand upon the wife, and I gave them this verse. And God who remembered Rachel, God who remembered Hannah, please remember this young youth. And then while after they brought me a ultrasound photo, as soon as they received the prayer, they conceived the child, and we can we saw the heartbeat of the baby in the ultrasound. And then so, and I told the husband, you know, make sure you keep this very well, so that you know whatever the wife asks, you do whatever she wants, do it for her. You take care of this baby very well. You see, if God just once remembers us, then whatever has been closed will open. So when we pray, let's pray that God just remember me. Many things are closed for me, and God please open for my business, open for my schooling, my education. Education, promotion, all these doors must open, and that can open when God remembers us. So let us fervently pray to our God that God remembers us, our homes, and our children. And I pray His blessing upon you in the name of the Lord. Let's read First Samuel chapter one, verse nineteen through twenty. First Samuel chapter one, verse nineteen through twenty. Then they arose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord, and returned again to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah had relations with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. 
You see, God remembered Hannah. And it came about in due time after Hannah had conceived that she gave birth to a son and she named him Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Amen. So we have seen the birth of Samuel. And now, secondly, let us examine when Samuel was weaned. When Samuel was weaned. When Samuel was weaned, it was in 1129 BC. 1129 BC. Because generally, the a Jewish culture deems the age of weaning as three years old. So children are generally weaned at the age of three. So once the child is weaned, the parents actually sent, child, uh, sent Samuel to Shiloh, but where Eli was serving as a priest. So Samuel was separated from his parents when he was only three years old. So this three-year-old child, you know, he probably missed his mom's bosom, right? But when he was only three years old, he was separated from his mom. And, and his, he, he was told, you have been dedicated to God, and so now you have to grow up in temple. Let us check this in 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 24. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 24 let's read it together now when she had weaned him she took him up with her with a three year old bull and one ephah of flour and a jug of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh although the child was young so how old was he? three years old and verse 28 Says, so I have also dedicated him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is dedicated to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. And then in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. Eleven. First Samuel chapter two verse eleven. Then Elkanah went to his home at Ramah, but the boy ministered to the Lord before Eli the priest. See, the father and mother returned to their home, and Samuel, when he was only three years old, stayed with Eli the priest, and he grew up under him. Thirdly. Samuel receives calling from God. Samuel receives calling from God. When Samuel was called, he was 12 years old. The Bible does not specifically say that he was 12 years old. But according to uh, the historical book written by Josephus, uh, he wrote that Samuel was 12 years old at the time. So what would be the BC year for this? It is 1120 BC. Samuel was 12 years old, and that is when he received calling from God. God says, Samuel, Samuel, God keeps calling. But Samuel thought it was Eli who was calling him. So he went to Eli, and Eli says, I've never called you. It must be God who called you. So Eli says, listen to God's voice carefully. So God calls his name, and God explains to Samuel how wretchedly the family of Eli will Fall. So Samuel was 12 years old at the time, and we can expound this biblically later. Now let's go to Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli. And word from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. So at the time the boy Samuel was, how old was he? He was 12 years old, about 12 years old at the time. So in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 13 through 14, God informed Samuel of the judgment that will befall the house of Eli. Verse 13, For I have told him that I am about to judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knew because his sons brought a curse on themselves and he did not rebuke them. 
Si Lai's sons will have relations with wives, uh, with women in the temple, and they committed all this um, immorality in the temple. And so God says, I will judge your house forever. And that sin cannot be atoned by a sacrifice or offering. Verse 14 says that, Therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. You see, what can we learn from this? Almost all sins can be atoned if we bring sacrifice or offering. Then God will accept it and forgive most of the sins. However, these sins to be cursed will never be forgiven. It cannot be atoned. Forever, it says. We can make a contrast between Samuel and Eli at this point. Let's draw a chart this way. So this is Eli, and this side is Samuel, young Samuel. And we see in the Bible that Eli was lying in his temple, and in his place. First uh, Samuel chapter 3, verse 2, and Eli was lying down in his place. However, where was Samuel? Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. That's in First Samuel chapter 3, verse 3. So God did not call Eli who was lying in his own place. And God did not give his word to Eli either. However, this 12 year old Samuel, although he was very young, he was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And so God called this prophet Samuel. And then he also informed the things that would take place in the future. So God gave prophet Samuel the words of prophecy. So what can we learn from this? God did not give anything to Eli who was lying down in his own place. Rather, God poured his curse upon him. But Samuel, who was lying in the temple where the Ark of God was, God called him, and God gave him the prophetic word. So I pray that our lives will also will always prioritize the temple of God more than our own houses, that we will draw nearer to the temple of God. We will yearn and long for the temple of God more than our own houses. If we think of God's church more than our own houses, then our home will be under God's protection and he will take full care of the home. But he's a priest and he was lying down in his place. Samuel was only 12 years old, but he wants to sleep in the temple and was trying to check the lamp of God will not go out. That's how much Samuel loved the church. That's how much he was faithful for the church. And so when Samuel was like that, God established Samuel as the highest prophet to rule over the entire Israel. So if you look at Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 1, God speaks through the prophet Jeremiah. God equated Samuel as great as Moses. Look at Israel. The Jews, the highest prophet they had is Moses. And, and another prophet who's as great as Moses was Samuel. So the Jewish people still all respect Moses and Samuel the same way. You see, people who draw near the temple of God from when they're very young, God will use those people in mighty ways. So in 2017, you know, let us not forsake coming to the temple because things get difficult and hard. But when we really prioritize worship to God more than anything else, I believe our God will pour His blessings upon all your households. So we have seen how Samuel was called by God. And fourthly, let us look at how Samuel was established as a prophet. How Samuel was established as prophet. Samuel. 
1102년이죠. This was 1102 BC. 맞잖아요. 1132년에 태어났는데 1132년에 태어났는데 1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1132년1
Jesus also came as a true priest, a true prophet, and true king. Therefore, you can see the Samuel foreshadows Jesus. And when we compare Samuel and Jesus, we can see that their, even their ages correspond to each other and perfectly match each other's age. We will continue to study this next week. During the Battle of Aphek is when the Ark of God was taken by the Philistines. And this found in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1 and below. Talk about the scene where the Ark was taken. When did the Battle of Aphek take place? This took place actually exactly 1102 BC, which is a very year when Prophet Samuel turned 30. That was the year when the Battle of Aphek took place. You see, when 1102 BC was when Samuel turned 30 years old. So we must not read the Bible without thinking about these things. Every verse, we must know now, although when he says Samuel, when he read on, knowing exactly what Samuel, how old Samuel was, and everything in the Bible became more vivid to you. And this is when Samuel was 3 years old, this is when Samuel was 12 years old, this is when Samuel was 30 years old, this is when Samuel was 52 years old. When we are aware of Samuel's age, the scene in the background becomes even more clear. Nobody in the world was able to really systematically organize this. It's Reverend Evan Park. He was able to organize all of this according to redemptive historical perspective. But although our Reverend Evan Park had systematically presented this for the first time, we still do not know this fully. If we just scheme through this, we will not be able to discover such a precious gem that is hidden in the word of redemptive history. So I pray that you will diligently come to this worship service every Thursday. And through these studies, your faith will grow and your grace will be overflowing, overflowing you. So that whatever you pray, then your prayer will be answered. John chapter 15 verse 7 says, if my word abides in you, if Father's word abides in you, then ask whatever you wish, you will be answered. So when we pray, while we are filled with the word of God, everything that we ask for will be fulfilled. So when we do not even have any word of God in us, we keep asking God for things, God cannot answer you. So I pray that you will diligently fill yourself with the word of God. So when we receive, uh, uh, we can see that when Samuel was called as a prophet, he was age of 30, and we found a very supporting evidence for this. So in conclusion, through whom did God proclaim his word? He proclaimed the word to the entire Israelites through this man named Samuel. So God's word was proclaimed through Samuel to the entire Israel. Then today, our church must become the spiritual Samuel. And each and every one of you must become a spiritual Samuel so that the word can come upon you and that you will take the word and spread this word to the various corners of this world. Elder Kim um, is a, in charge of women's ministries, a literature missions team. And so what she does is she will send his redemption series to all the national libraries throughout Korea. So anybody who comes to the national libraries throughout Korea will soon encounter the his redemption series. So let us pray that just as through Samuel, God's word was um, proclaimed to the entire Israel, may I also become channel of our God so that through me the word of God can be proclaimed came throughout the world. You know, when we pray like this, our God will truly use us and bless us as his channel to proclaim his word to the world. Last Thursday, the two elders came and they um, belong to CTS, Christian TV service, um, uh, Christian TV station, CTS. Actually, these two elders belong to the, one of the biggest churches in Korea. But one of our elders is kept nagging at one of the elders. Please come to our church, check out church. And so because the elders were so persistent, the elder came to church first. But after he came once, he wanted to come twice, he wanted to come third time, he came fourth time, and this elder brought another elder, that's why he came. 
Now this elder is actually in charge of the CTS and he says he is actually in the missions committee team who decides a pastor who teaches the chapel time for the 250 staff workers of CTS. So he actually assigned me as one of the um, a pastors to teach the staff members of CTS company. And I was notified yesterday, so please pray for this. I was not only invited, but he also invited other pastors and elders from our church because he's going to offer us a tour of CTS. And so if the staff workers are blessed by the message that they, that's proclaimed through me, then and they uh, say, well, we must proclaim this kind of word through our broadcasting station. Then they will now begin to deliver this word of redemptive victory through CTS, right? So although we may be very weak and insignificant, if God does his wonders and work, then things will happen. Miracles will take place. Now just elders, you know, our elders at our church, you know, and, you know, he, he she came persistently asking this elder, and he finally came over. I had lunch with him last Thursday, and this elder confessed, you know what? I cannot go to my church anymore. I left my home saying that I'm going to go to my church, but I ended up at, at Pyongyang Church. You see, when the true word of life is delivered, how awesome is this? Through the Bible, we are studying the word of the living God. What is the point of learning the things of, uh, that takes place in the world? What benefit would that be in our life? Right? Today we learned Samuel was born in 1132 and when he was 2 years old he was weaned in 1129 and he was called when he was 12 years old that's 1120 BC and when he was 30 he was established as prophet and that was in 1102 BC just the fact that we learned this God is so pleased with us because nobody in the world knew about this my history but you know my history so I believe God will pour his amazing blessings upon all of you who come to listen to this word let us read in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19 and verse 21. Let us read this verse. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19. But Samuel grew and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fail. And then verse 21. Ready? And the Lord appeared again as Shiloh, because the Lord revealed himself to Samuel as Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Chapter 4, Thus the word of Samuel came to all Israel. You see, through Samuel, God delivered his word to the entire Israel. We must become the channel of the word. Then what is a prerequisite? Verse 19, it says the Lord was with Samuel. In verse 19, it says the Lord was with Samuel. To the people whom God is with, God's word will be given to that person. So we must become the people whom God is with. We must become the church that God is with. We come up with all these tactics and schemes to not stay with people like that. We have to be with God. When we are with God, then God will give you the word. And with what kind of people does God want to be with? God wants to be with those people who are pleasing to him. God wants to be with people who are pleasing to him. So we must always be mindful when I do this. Would this be pleasing to Father? And if it's not, it doesn't seem like it's pleasing to Father, then let's just cut it off. It doesn't matter how close we are to that person. Let's cut it off. We must live a life not pleasing to men, but we must live a life that's pleasing to God. John chapter 8 verse 29, Jesus confesses, John chapter 8 verse 29 he says because I always do things that are pleasing to Father God Father does not leave me alone so whenever I do the things that are pleasing to Father Father is with me and Father gives me the word and I become a channel of the word and the word is delivered to the all Israel 
여러분이 so 하나님을 기쁘시게 하는 사람이 되어서 여러분을 통해서 구속사의 말씀이 The word of redemption will be proclaimed to the entire Korea and to the entire world. And I pray this blessing upon you in the name of the Lord. We have studied up to Samuel's age of 33, so we will continue next week about his birth of life. Let us pray in unison at this time.